Hello, welcome back to Azales TV. This is part 12 of my wooden clock build. Now, since last week I've done a little bit of work off camera to this. Actually, quite a bit of work off camera. So let's show you what I've done. First of all, I've added this USB socket for powering the clock. Got the socket on a circuit board that's held down. It's screwed down to this base plate. That's just the, the framework, and it's held down by this piece of wood here. These screws going all the way through into brass inserts in the bottom part here. And this is what goes through through the back. out of the front side. So we've got the USB socket connected to all these cables. I've sold all the cables in case I need those for anything in the future. That comes out the front. Secondly I've added this circuit board which the circuit for the clock will ultimately go on. It's not going to go on there yet. I'm still prototyping on the breadboard. This is the circuit for charging the battery. This red one. The green one is for boosting the power from the battery to 5 volts to power the rest of the circuit that's going to go here. And also the servos. And the servos I've coiled up the leads all fancy like and they plug into the headers on the board here. With all these new parts being fastened with the brass threaded inserts, which actually proved to be a little bit too long for this thinner back plate, I've added some reinforcing parts and I've used lots of these scrap parts of ply which, which I've kept hold of. So I've got all these odd sizes going on just to reinforce the depth of the holes so they're all glued in place and I've had a really big piece here for the main part of the clock finally now you notice I've got brass threaded inserts in these parts one in each corner and that's for the battery holder and that's going to go in here down in there about there battery goes inside that and everything plugs in that what I've had to do is put a metal plate on the back of this because when I put the battery in it will cover up where the screw holes are on the top so I'm going to drill them hold down to that metal base plate so the screw, the screw will be countersunk and these screws, these screws will just go through as normal hold everything down Lastly, I need to cut a slot in this metal here. So I cut it out of wood, then I realised I needed to put the metal on to hold this down properly. So I need to cut the slot out of this metal, and that goes around that cable. So it all holds in place. Because originally I glued these walls down to this back plate, but then I remembered I have veneer to go on here. So the first job for actually making anything for this video will be cutting the slot out of here. Drilling these holes out, drilling these holes down to the depth of this base metal, and then rounding off the corners. And then I'm going to screw it down onto here, and I'll show you how that all fits together. Eee, here we go, all done. So I've drilled through these holes with a very fine drill bit. Then I've gone through with a very wide drill bit, just drill through to the wood. I've done it on all of them, I thought I might as well, just it makes it look a bit nicer cosmetically. And then I've gone through with a 3mm drill bit, and it's pushed the tin away from the surface a little bit, because it's very thin metal. So I've taken a file and some sandpaper and just smoothed it all back down again, and I've gone over the edges, and it looks all nice. It's a complete pain to file all the edges, so I'm, I'm in, so I've left them square, I've not rounded them over. And then finally I've done this slot in here, which was really really difficult because it's too thick to cut with a utility knife which is what I wanted to do originally and it's too thin to do with the jeweler's saw because it's thinner than the gap between the teeth so the, the saw teeth just catch on it continuously so I'm trying to push the saw along like that to try and cut into it and that took quite a while right let's thread this onto the cable and I can screw it down so the veneer will be on the back plate and because of this, again I didn't really think this through properly did I? Um, I have to cut a hole in the veneer which this plug fits through so it goes like rip through the veneer, threads through and then everything goes on top of it. And that means when this goes on, this will cover up that hole. 
and it sits down like that. Let's screw that in place. Here we go. Right. Battery goes in there and it's just holding my gravity when this clock hangs on the wall. There's no point having any other straps or anything. I'm going to fit something in there to hold it, but it's not much point. This goes in here. So now that circuit should be live. Let's plug a USB cable in as well. Just for laughs. We don't need it until we're actually charging the thing. Right, the output lines of these two which go into the circuit board there so let's just touch these on here and this is a 5 volt LED it's got the driver and everything else put into the circuit there we go so that works good let's unplug that that turns that circuit off and it doesn't drain the battery down so the USB power comes in the bottom here and there's a phone charger that goes in that USB socket wherever it is, where is it, there. Charges this up continuously and it powers everything and if there's a loss of power this will carry on powering the circuit. So it will be powered continuously, there's no like switch over or anything fancy like that. Doesn't really need it you know. So that was a bit of a break from numbers and mathematics and programming and everything else because my god I've had a headache with all that these past couple of weeks. So next week I'm going to be adding some metal shimmer here to raise up the level of the pivot point for the crank arm that's going to go from here to here because this crank arm sits on top of this one so it needs to be slightly higher. I'm also going to be test fitting the veneer which means cutting out the hole for this part which this cable threads through and then I've got to redrill the hole I've got well not redrill I've got to drill holes for these screws and this servo bit down here and also this and I'm gonna see how that looks visually and then probably start working on backs on the servos again so we'll see how that goes next week so for now that's all we've got time for Tune in next week when we see what we're up to and if you're not subscribed don't forget to do so so we keep up to date and you know when I'm going to release the video. Thank you all for watching so far and take care, have a great week.